because things were quite tough in England after the war, the land of opportunity was America, for sure. All the, the exciting music was coming there with the Glenn Miller band and so forth. And uh, England had also been influenced by the, the American uh, GIs and so forth. So they, there was real interest in the American music. And my father saw that as the opportunity. England was very flat. I mean, it's been pretty exhausted by the, the war effort. And um, first opportunity he got, he, he took a boat out to um, America. By 1950, he had, uh, I think, seven hits. So he would, and then he would take American songs back to England with him. So he would go to take English songs to America, and then he would make deals to take American songs. He said, look, what have you got? I could take it back. Let me work on it for you. And he started to do the sort of cross-transatlantic uh, trade and he opened an office in New York and around 1953 or 52 or 53 I think 1953 Jimmy Myers a guy called Jimmy Myers came into his office with this song it was a big um, American I don't know if he was a marine or if he was but he was a what they call a grunt I guess in, the, in more modern parlance he was an American GI, big guy and smoking a cigar and said, look, you've got to take this song, it's the greatest song, it's going to be a huge hit. And my father heard it and it was, you know, they, everything was ballads in those days, it was a, a different era. And the guy was very persistent and my father, as he told it, look, just to get rid of him, said, I'll give you two hundred and fifty dollars and and just get out of here basically and so he took the song from him um, for the world outside of US. A year later it was in that film Blackboard Jungle and changed the whole face of everything. Jimmy Myers was a, quite a character. He was uh, he, he wasn't a great songwriter by any means but he was a big he was a hustler he was a very determined guy and he believed in the power of PR and um, I mean subsequently you know you hear different stories um, apparently it was the son of the film's producer that, um, that loved the song and, and wanted it in the film the story goes that uh, they spent they, they had a session booked and I think the guys arrived late they spent Normally it was a two-hour session. I think the first hour, they they lost the first hour because uh, of a late arrival. I think, and they worked the whole session on the A side, which was 13 women. And Jimmy said, "You know, but what about my song? What about my song?" Then in the last, in like one take, they they put down "Rock Around the Clock," and. Um, they didn't have time to quite maybe get the balance right, so it had a little bit of distortion, and, and it just had magic.